<coughs> Fuck. Um, we're gonna want to take this pop filter and burn it. After. <laughs> Actually, by this pop filter, I mean the one that I just gave to Armin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> uh, uh. Welcome to this episode of Scale is Needed, folks. I'm Armin Hammer, and uh, this right here, Mr. Cliff Bogart. And I'm feeling great. How are you feeling, Kyle? Yo. <laughs> How's it going? Two-thirds of this table feels uh, normal <laughs> to great. And Kyle uh, has been very, very sick for going on 96 days. So um, if, I, if I sound a little different, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if I sound too sexy... It's because it's because of my sinus infection. Now, can I venture a guess here and say that you wouldn't be sick if you drank? That's true. Uh, I was. I thought about this. Mm. I, I very rarely get sick, uh, and then I quit drinking, and then like two and a half months later, this happens to me. So I think the alcohol was killing all the germs. I actually think there might be something to that for myself. I also haven't been drinking. Now, normally, I don't get sick. I hadn't gotten sick for like five or six years. And now he has full-blown AIDS. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but, now here's the thing, though. It was rare just uh, just like a year ago. AIDS is pretty rare. Or less, <laughs> less than a year. Six, six months ago, while I was still drinking, I got sick for like the first time in five years. So that's mm -hmm. fine, whatever. But then, just last month, I also got a little bit sick. So maybe mm -hmm. the... Uh, the uh, the germ-killing power of alcohol really is something that uh, my body is dependent on. Official scale is needed position <laughs> on alcohol. On alcohol is that it makes you immortal. Consume with abandon. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it. Maybe our our we are adapted by our recent ancestors to have to consume alcohol regularly in order to be healthy. There you go. Because are the the. Uh, the ancestors we come from pretty much come from alcohol drinking cultures for the last several thousand years anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of that's how the evolution shuck out for us. Uh, Makes sense to me. Yeah. Yep. That, yep. Sounds, that, that sounds like science. I mean, you said evolution <coughs> and ancestors, and both of those are science yep. words. So what, what have I said about how I interpret science? <laughs> we all know. The way that every human being interprets science. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So week two of the open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, week two of the open. 17.2 uh -huh. is finally done. And mm -hmm. it's the first time in 2017 that the open has finished on time. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah. So that's uh -huh. cool. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Armin is doing spectacularly well so far. I'm doing what I can his yeah. goal what was your goal uh originally it was top 10 percent, and mm -hmm. then kyle was, and then we looked at the numbers we're fined and too. we realized that i accidentally got into top 10 percent last year there you go. When I, thought I, I, I know i know Not the range trying. i know the range you're at right now the range you're at is you are somewhere some mysterious place within broadly within the top 5.8 percent mm. so within the top 5.8 percent could be the top one percent wow. could be somewhere else in there but broadly in the top 5.8 percent up to the the five point nice. eighth percent. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's pretty strong. That's strong to quite strong, actually. So we moved yeah, it yeah. to top seven percent, and I think it sounds I think like I'm moving you're, in that you're direction. Well, yeah. You're well in there. And wow. I would, I would argue that neither of these first two workouts were things that I'm particularly good at. Yeah, and we haven't really talked about the. We haven't talked about the second workout yet. So, yeah, that, that um, second workout, the bar muscle ups. Yes, bar muscle ups. How how was that for you doing that? Um. Well, first tell us where where were you when you were doing the workout? I was in. Ohio. There you were. At CrossFit Mentality. Mentality. Owned by one Scotsman Panchik. Scotsman Panchik. Mm. And uh, inventor of the pancake. In, yes, yes. It was a, it's a bastardized version of his last name. Exactly. Yeah. It was originally pancake when they came over from Czechoslovakia, but they had to change it to Panchik because it sounds more American. Right. And there's a lot of just racial hate against Czechoslovakians. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Those Slovaks. Yes. Um, 
Czechoslovaks. Mm -hmm. So I was with Scott Panchik and his brothers, Saxon and Spencer. Mm -hmm. uh, they and all had big snatches, didn't they? they <laughs> <laughs> I didn't inspect their snatches as closely as I would have wanted to. Mm -hmm. But I did get to watch them do 17.2 back to back to back. And, yeah. uh, they did. Each one went one at a time. And each one beat the previous two, beat the previous one. Oh, wow. So their scores continually get kept getting better and better. And when I when I was there, th it was the second week in a row that uh, uh, Scott got beat by one of his younger brothers. Mm -hmm. And so they both ended up, all of them ended up re repeating it on uh, on Monday, I think. That also reminds me of another set of siblings, another set of three siblings there, uh, the Smith brothers. Dude. Interestingly, mm -hmm. in the top 50, there's only one Smith brother in the top 50. Mm. Of, in the world. In the world. Top 50 in the world. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's That's not Ben. It's not Ben, and it's not Alex. Yeah. It's, it's Dane. Yeah. Dane the is dark, his brothers. Dane Dark Horse Smith. So, actually, uh, so Dane is actually in first place in the Atlantic region right yeah, now. Yeah, in the Atlantic. I He's beating that. both of his brothers, uh -huh. obviously, mm -hmm. by being in first place, mm -hmm. by definition. Mm -hmm. Here's what I heard. I heard a rumor that of the three Smith brothers, mm. Dane is actually has the best conditioning. Oh, really? Interesting. So, what has been? How has how has Dane done in previous years? Not I, great. I mean, he's yeah. been he's been coming off of uh, injuries like shoulder and knees. I think he said he was in the regional last year, both. wasn't he? Uh, or not? Alec was. Alec I don't was, think. Okay. I don't know mm -hmm. if Dane was. He's not. He's not quite as strong as either Alec or, or mm. Ben are. Um, so, like, that's one of his his you know weaknesses. But mm -hmm. he's also re really young. Yeah, yeah, he's much much younger than they are. So. Uh, you know, I think he he definitely is is making a name for himself. If he can stay healthy, how young is he? I have no idea. I want to say he's under twenty. Oh, under twenty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I want to say he's pretty young. So he's still he's still ripening. Yes, he still it doesn't does not have a man body yet. Mm hmm. He's yeah. on his way. Yes, and actually that's that's something. You know what I say? If there's grass on the field, play a ball. The official <laughs> Kyle Bogart <laughs> position. <laughs> On children's uh. bodies. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just Dane, Dane Smith's body just specifically. Just specifically Dane Smith's body. You know, if he's anything like his older brothers, there probably isn't grass on the field, <laughs> Kyle. Uh, so, so, yeah, so Dane Smith is, is apparently the Dark Horse Smith. Dark Horse Dane. <laughs> Um, cool. Yes. No, I'm very. That was exciting to see that the the three of them are up there, and we've we've certainly you know Ben has been in the spotlight. We've given a lot of attention to Alec because he's been active posting all that crazy stuff. But there's a whole other Smith brother now for us to to speculate about. So this will be interesting. So thus far and through the rest of the Open, tracking the performance as a team, the Panchicks versus the Smiths, who will come out on top? Do you think? Uh. Man, that's a good question. I think once the weights get heavier, the Panchicks would probably edge out, but not by much. Mm -hmm. It looks like right now, it looks like all three of the Panchik brothers are going to make regionals. Oh, yeah? Which would be pretty fucking cool. Yeah, they would wouldn't be, be the first set because ZA, Alex, and Jacob Anderson, oh, right. all three went to regionals last year at mm -hmm. Central. But, uh, but imagine if, if in the Central Regional... All three Anderson brothers <laughs> and all three Panchik brothers <laughs> competed together. That's you're talking mm, about of mm. the forty competitors. Nice. Uh, you're talking about a, a you know what what percentage is that fifteen percent of the field is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are all, three, all three of the Andersons are competing <laughs> individually this year. Maybe. All, yep. Yeah. Looks yeah. like it. Mm, nice. Brothers nice. on brothers on brothers. Yeah. Um, so what happens in a in a competition if um, Scott Panchik put both of his brothers on his shoulders forming a human tower and then he this ben smith did the same you know as did the anderson brothers and then they had to try and knock each other over in a swimming pool like chicken like exactly who would win i think because then i think that's about the best way i can think of to determine who is the fittest and has the superior genetics um that's a good question. Is it three way, like one on one on one, or is it like a, a tournament bracket? No, there's no there's no bracketing. It's just t three stacks of three humans each, all fighting in a battle royale against each other. 
<laughs> just teetering and bobbing. The Andersons have strong legs. I yeah. might give it to the Andersons. The Andersons there. do have strong legs, but I think in overall weight mm-hmm. and size, the Smiths might be the lightest. So Ben would be able to you know move around move a lot a more if he's yeah, facing yeah. his his mm-hmm, brothers. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. You put Dane at the top of that pyramid. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's smaller than than Alec and yeah, Ben yeah. are, and he's got you know he's agile. That's right. And then you have Alec in the middle with his um, with his old elastics that and he will employ. And his strong core, yeah. His very strong his core. His very strong core. Yes, to be able to sort of whip Dane at people <laughs> <laughs> like a flail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah. think I would say I would say the Smith brothers just based off of, yeah, yeah. of odd combination of genetics. Well, then we've settled it now, and we yeah. don't need to look at how they finish in the open. <laughs> that does answer the question. Though that reminds me of what could be a good idea for a team event. Uh, we've yet to, uh, some, a team event we've yet to see in the CrossFit Games Chicken is a pool. Uh, is inter- we've integrated <laughs> events from lots of different sports. Uh, what one event, what one sport we've yet to integrate into this is cheerleading. There see, you go. Cheerleaders they stack themselves up in all sorts of weird shapes and pyramids and mm-hmm. hold each other up. We have men, we have women on a team, six people. You can do a lot of stacking of humans there. I'm thinking yeah. some sort of uh, some sort of cheerleading style pyramid, especially I mean, you where we can get, get the smallest three, two, girl. One. Oh, I I know, I know exactly <laughs> what it is. A basket toss where the three dudes toss the smallest girl as high <laughs> as they can. <laughs> that that see that, that that's yeah, not a go. bad team event there. What they should really do is they should have they should have a team event now. Mm-hmm. Now that now that CrossFit is signed with WME IMG, there's a mm-hmm. lot more room that they have to do things like this, right? And mm-hmm. uh, you know, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, it's beautiful, lots of outdoor space, public parks and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think what they r- should really do is recreate the uh, the scene. From the Stallone rock climbing movie, which mm-hmm. movie is that again? What's Cliffhanger. That? Cliffhanger. From Cliffhanger, mm-hmm. in the very beginning, where there's mm. a wire connecting two yes. cliffs, yeah. and the team mm. of six has to hang from one of their members yes. who's on the wire, and it's a, uh, it's, it's just however long you can hang with the most amount of weight. Or they instead recreate the recreation of that scene from Ace Ventura. Part two, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, where he suspends a raccoon above a gorge and then loses him. So basically, this would involve Ben Smith holding as many raccoons as he could (laughs) while suspended over a gorge. I think what actually what it would be is replacing every team member except the team captain captain with raccoons who wear shirts with the names of the team mm. members on them and then put them still through CrossFit workouts. There you go. So anyway, week two of the Open. Um, <laughs> yes, I watched the Panchik Brothers. They crushed it. They all yeah. redid it, and they all crushed well, it even more. In terms of reaction to the actual workout, though, itself, uh, you know, uh, the I was very surprised to see dumbbells pop in yet again. Two dumbbells, meaning it's twice the logistical challenge to get yes. twice the number of dumbbells. Two dumbbells. There. Not only is it two dumbbells, but it's two dumbbells and a distance of travel with yes. the dumbbells. Yes. Which oh, sh- every combination of inconvenience. Double right. headaches. Right. It was like, hey, you guys, remember how last year you guys all complained about having to create 25 foot long mm-hmm. uh, lunging lanes? Great. Now you're gonna have to you're gonna have to create a 50 foot long lunging lane, mm-hmm. uh, 25 out and back, and of course. Course, you're going to need twice as many dumbbells as you used in the previous open workout, yeah. which it itself was quite logistically mm-hmm. yeah. challenging. Well, the only thing I can say about the lunging this time is that since it's uh, dumbbell lunging and not barbell lunging, turning around real quick is way easier. Mm. And I safer. Mys- oh, yes, yes. I myself did this workout uh, with only 10 feet, uh, just turning around, not quickly but slowly each time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's... Eh, it's less absurd than uh, the idea of trying to spin an overhead barbell around. Mm. Which is why they, they only did 25 feet last year. At the over, that, l- to, to be totally mm. fair, mm. They only, you oh, went one right. distance and dropped right. it. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, this certainly, uh, for the second year in a row, it has raised the profile of lunging as a movement, uh, competitive movement in CrossFit. I just don't feel like you saw a lot of lunging in the past. Now, two years in a Hell row. Hell yeah. The 95-pound the, the overhead lunges there... They're, there really aren't that many lunges with any kind of real weight to sign. These are even heavier. as two 50-pound dumbbells. Mm-hmm. Previously, you only really see lunges with any kind of weight 
maybe that one at the games with the axle bar overhead mm-hmm. or the front rack lunge. It's pretty rare even then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fair. And I have seen a lot in the past year, you know, uh, in in the workouts of big old badasses that they, they do a lot of, like, heavy step-ups, that sort of thing, which is similar – deal right instead of doing like box jumps they'll do like heavy step ups or Mm -hmm. you know dan bailey would do uh weighted front rack lunges for you know ab work and and Mm. leg work as well and yeah i don't know i don't know if there's a lot of people who are like doing extra lunges and sam dancer would do very heavy lunges yes here's but here by the way telling (laughs) oh yes exactly that's how you do it uh a mm. technical question. You're probably more experienced with this than I am. Uh, when doing box step-ups there, my tendency is always to cheat as much as possible with the leg that's on the ground mm. to push off from that. Right. What is the – what – how would you judge properly a box step-up in competition uh, with weight, say, mm-hmm. uh, so that you're not just basically doing a one-legged jump with an assist from the leg that is already on the box. Uh, you would say that you can't let your back leg touch the box until you've already stand stood up all the way. Hmm, hmm. that's interesting. So okay. that way, that oh, way. Oh, so you have to press right, your way you can't, up. You can't do like the kind of like put the one foot on the box and then just like pop up the other oh, foot yeah, and, yeah, then and then stand, stand up. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay, yeah. That mm-hmm. way you have to stand all the way up with the one leg mm, and then and then put you can put the other leg mm-hmm. down. I can dig that. I can yeah. dig that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so 17.2. I thought the workout was actually a pretty good workout. Mm-hmm. It's a little busy. Yeah. Like I don't really like – they have to do this. They have mm-hmm. to make workouts that don't flow the way that normal workouts that we're all used to, mm-hmm. right? Like you'd never see a gym program a workout like 17.1 or 17.2. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. But that's fine because this is supposed to be like a competition style thing. Mm-hmm. So the workouts tend to look a lot busier and a lot – like they're not – I don't know, like you know how like you look at a workout and you're like, oh, this this has some symmetry. Mm-hmm. It makes sense, yeah, yeah. right? This doesn't make sense. These don't have symmetry mm-hmm. or make sense, and yeah. it's, it, that's on purpose. It's yeah. it's designed that way. So, yeah, it's like I, an, an AMRAP with an alternating variation only on one movement, right? So, you know, right? So and uh, and you know the 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 point is to try <laughs> to to try to kind of like trip people up get them into like places where they're not comfortable with it and mm-hmm. that's one way of doing it you know you make you make workouts that feel a little more clunky than mm-hmm. than normal workouts and this is part of my big guy bias coming in no doubt but what the fuck is with the joke of only doing eight power cleans with the fucking 50 pound dumbbells <laughs> they're curls yeah yeah they're and definitely fucking curls yes, and yeah. and so there's that so you do a ton of lunges with the 50 pound dumbbells which seems objectively harder and there's a lot of them then you got, you know, just fucking, it's not, it doesn't even count as a movement to do the power cleans. And then s- twice as many, 16 toe to bars. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know. I, I This is the big guy bias here. But for me, doing a rep for rep, a toe to bar is much harder than yeah. the 50 pound <laughs> dumbbell very true. power cleans. Yeah. Now, I know that's not the case for everyone. Maybe there's some, you know, Steve Rogers prior to getting the super soldier serum injected guy for whom. Uh, the power cleans, the fifty-pound dumbbells would be tough. Right. It was a very elaborate way to say a small guy. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's something. That <laughs> Maybe there's some mind. sort of small man. <laughs> a la Steve Rogers. Bef- Let me. I feel the best way to communicate the idea of a small man is for you to picture a really big, strong man, but then an earlier version of that man <laughs> who is less strong. Well, the, the first, the first version that always comes to mind when I think of a small, unstrong person is. Uh, our buddy, our mutual friend there, but that's oh, an, yes, uh, that's yes. an in joke that wouldn't work <laughs> for the large audience. So the next option, which came to mind instantaneously, is the CGI shrunken Chris Evans. <laughs> I want you to picture the Incredible Hulk, but take away all of his definitional characteristics <laughs> <laughs> and actually just envision a scientist, the yes. scientist he is supposed to be. Yes. Imagine uh, the Incredible Hulk, but before he changes, when he's a, a man, <laughs> the average man. <laughs> Imagine Superman, but on Krypton. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh. so so uh, the workout definitely had some some things designed to trip people up, but mm-hmm. it also, you know, I think one one thing that is is a little odd about this year's Open is that both of these workouts so far have kind of been about the same type of athlete, mm-hmm. right? The same type of athlete yep. is going to succeed here. And the the argument that CrossFit would make is the best are going to be the best no matter what. And that's 
that is true. That's mm-hmm. by definition what makes them the best. But we're not talking about the top 10 in the world. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about the top five to eight per region. Yeah, yeah. If you look at the regions, like people in those like, you know, uh, eighth to 20th spots who are trying to make regionals Mm -hmm. those athletes they need a lot of things to go their way Mm because even a second faster a couple reps here and there is going to be the difference between them making regionals and not making regionals and when you have tests that are this similar to each other you may be stacking the deck for people who are kind of smaller more conditioning based sure sure but we got five workouts in total and and that's my question is after the first workout we thought Okay, so what will the which we thought would might favor the shorter, smaller athlete? Um, we we asked the question, what, what will workout two be to sort of counter program to that workout to create a balance, a yin and yang, where okay, now it'll kind of even the playing field towards the potentially taller, longer athlete, the right. uh, stronger athlete, um, and instead we got something that did the exact same thing. So now I wonder. You know, um, is it oversight or is it by design? And where, we, where over the course of the five weeks? Here is we one movement that we're going to see in the next workout: wall balls. We'll I was, see I was wall about balls, to say that. wall yeah. balls in the next workout, and then something with a goddamn barbell. <laughs> I think there's going to be a workout that's a mix that has yeah. both dumbbell and barbell movements in it. Mm-hmm. I think that that's why not. You know, fuck it. Why not just keep yeah, the trend yeah. rolling? Well, one thing that it seems that Dave Castro has had a sensitivity to in the past is creating drama in the end. So stacking things evenly such that it would oh, there's a lot that's on the table so that people really have to push themselves hard in an intense workout at the end. So I'm wondering if we're going to create what will be there to kind of cr- create upheavals in the leaderboard such that you know, a lot gets thrown into that last. So you really have to work hard in that last workout to be able to secure your spot. I'm kind of curious um, where it goes. But, um, but yeah, I think wall balls mixed with something heavy would be cool to see so that maybe I would do the workout instead of not do the workout, <laughs> which is what I've been doing. Uh, yeah, let's just say hopefully at some point during the Open – a workout will show up with a movement that you'd be happy doing. That would be great. As opposed to literally, literally zero. <laughs> literally zero. Yeah, of zero things. of the movements that have shown mm-hmm. up so far. Here's what I'd like to see. Are movements that, that you want to do. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. I would like to see some rep scheme wherein we have an escalating weight on the barbell, say escalating weight on the snatches, intermixed with wall balls. Mm-hmm. I think that would be the perfect big man workout <laughs> to balance out the other two there. There you go. I, I imagine I imagine something similar to what we what we saw last year with the toes to bar double under squat clean workout. If you were to make that workout, you know, uh, wall ball, wall double, ball under. double under squat snatch, mm-hmm. and kept the same sort of yeah yeah, that would be a killer workout. Yeah, I like it already. I want to do that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do it. <laughs> Speaking of doing it, ah. you did seventeen point two. I did, and um, cr- how many how many bar muscle ups did you get? <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. No. Uh, do you get it? What? Do you get what I'm trying <laughs> I, to say? I get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I get it. I get it. I get it. So did you attempt to do an RX and just make it to the bar muscle ups and then stop? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I um. I don't know why that was so funny. It is funny. I did it as RX. <laughs> yeah. And of course I didn't make it to the bar muscle ups. Really? I thought, yeah. I thought you would have made it. No. I was, oh, I really? was. I got nine reps into the second round of Toe to Bar. Oh. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. My, to- my Toe to Bars were all done in singles. Oh, that I might be why. You just spent a lot of time on the toaster bar. Yes. Mm. I spent a lot of time on the toaster bar and very, very little time on the one set of power cleans that I <laughs> ended up doing. <laughs> so I spent the least amount of time on that. So <laughs> wait, so wait though, time. the structure of the workout, I'm trying to remember, is yes, you do lunges, one two rounds. Lu- yeah. yeah, it's lunges, uh-huh. toaster bar, uh-huh. power clean, lunges, toaster bar, oh. power clean. Wait. No power clean for me. No power clean for. <laughs> That's where Wait, I got so it w- but wasn't it lunges, toe bar, power clean, lunges, then muscle no. ups? Then? So two, you had two, two of one, two, two rounds of one, two rounds, two two rounds of the toe bar, gotcha. and then the that in the twelve minute time cap, it was you know lo- I was uh, halfway through my uh, uh, doing singles on toe bar for the second set, and I looked over at the clock, and it's like eleven fifty. <laughs> it's like oh shit, well whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Because for me, a toad bar is I stare at the bar for a while <laughs> and prepare for the pain that's going to be in my hands, then jump up, swing my fat ass around, <laughs> clang them into, clang my feet into the bar, jump down, press down the calluses in my hand, 
then wait a second, then grab again. <laughs> repeat the process. Repeat the process. Hashtag Jim Nasty. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hashtag Oli Nastics. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffy Nastics. <laughs> I, now, I, here's the thing. Big Nastics is a term there, but none of the Big Nastics people who are posting about them doing Big Nastics, they're not as big as me. That's right. Big Nastics are like posting for people who are like just slightly <laughs> over 200 pounds. It's like, no, no, you know, no. I saw a video hmm. of... Uh, of a strong man here in Texas, Gabe oh, yeah. Pena, doing mm. he weighs three hundred pounds or so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he did the salmon ladder. Yes. Like from American Ninja oh. Warrior. Mm-hmm. Which mm-hmm. is fucking crazy. That is crazy. Cool. There's yeah. a there's in another in addition to being big, he is also gifted with being strong. He's, yes. he's uh, wildly strong. There's yes. another uh giant giant man. He wasn't giant when I first met him, but mm-hmm. he is giant now, which is Martin Lyces. Yeah. He's uh he competed at the world's strongest man last year and he also um, just competed at the Arnold this weekend, the mm-hmm. pros. Yeah. He stepped in for Big Z when Big Z had to come, mm. come out for um, his injury or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, Martins used to be a lot smaller. He was like around 200, 230, and now he's mm-hmm. like closer to 300, probably mm-hmm. a little bit more. And he's like fucking thick. He deadlifted 916 or wow. 906 or some shit at – at the uh, at the Arnold's, it was crazy. It's amazing cool. that those kind of deadlifts are now kind of middle of the road. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, uh, well, I mean, you're, you're, it's, it's pretty gnarly. It's yeah. pretty yeah. gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there aren't very many people pulling nine hundred on the face of the planet, and it's yeah. it just it looks it looks fucking plebeian because you know, yeah. yeah. Of Eddie Hall other. pulls eleven hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. He's he's literally twenty percent less. Now, wasn't there another to, to touch on the Arnold? Though wasn't there another deadlift world record at the Arnold that went down? Yes. Uh, here's Is that a, a different record because it was yes. with the long bar? Yeah, it's a different oh, okay. bar. So that's one thing that you have to realize about about strongman. They mm-hmm. have a lot of very specific world records. So mm-hmm. there's like world records for a deadlift. World records for a deadlift uh, without a suit. World records for a deadlift on the elephant bar. World yeah, records yeah. for a deadlift from 18 inches. World records for an mm-hmm. axle bar deadlift. World records for double overhand axle bar deadlift. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And it's like every variation has yeah, its yeah. own world record. And Eddie Ed- Hall specifically, those with like a standard barbell. His is deadlift. just like his is just the deadlift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's standard barbell. The strongman the, the, strong, the strong style is with straps, yeah. and it's usually done then done mm-hmm. double overhand. Whereas the powerlifting standard would be no straps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think he. He was wearing a lifting suit, a powerlifting suit, like a deadlift suit. Okay. Um, but I'm not exactly sure what that completely adds. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it adds a little bit. Yeah. And the longer bar, I would assume, would also give one a little bit of an advantage just because by taking the slack out of the bar, you can lift from a higher position. Yeah. It know? does It does do, It does do. two things. Like it has, a, it has a positive, which is what you mentioned, which yeah. is you kind of take the slack out and instead of starting on the ground, it starts like yeah. right below your knees. Yeah. But it also is much whippier. Yeah, it's very unstable. So if you, if you have any sort of front to back movement, it, it fights you yeah, and, yeah. and it oscillates a ton yeah because that's i remember the first year watching that long bar um watching like guys would pull it up off the ground and it was just like shaking like yeah. a uh like a big thing that shakes a lot um, <laughs> <laughs> um i'm sick i don't have to think of clever like shit. a transparent thing, thing. <laughs> to bring it all the way back, back to, ace to, ventura to ace ventura when nature calls. um speaking of eddie hall he squatted about some stuff dude seriously dude mm. it yes. was crazy now you have yes. to see this video but is he doing it fairly you know narrow stance deep all that good it's stuff? it's a normal it's fucking a norm- squat yeah, no. yeah, yeah. by it's narrow a- stance i mean not a really wide no stance. no he's yeah. not like powerlifting no, squatting no, no. It. he's just squ- squatting squatting it here's like what's in crazy a, in a squat rack in like where he he takes it out walks it back yeah squats so to yeah bring in, everyone so speed. in november he posted this this video of him uh squatting 345 kilos 760 pounds uh-huh. and he he does a thing where he's like he doesn't use belts he doesn't use knee sleeves he doesn't wear lifting shoes mm-hmm. He does it all in basically in Jordans. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's just, it's crazy. He has like this, the, the bar is fucked up. It's like a broken bar. One of the bearings doesn't work. It's all weird and wobbly. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he put up this video in late November last year where he's squatting 760 pounds. He squats it for six. Uh-huh. And he has three spotters, mm-hmm. one on each side and one behind him. And uh-huh. the last rep was like kind of a grind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just put up a video of him squatting 760 for eight. <laughs> with no spotters, mm-hmm. no sleeves, no belt, nothing in his regular trainers, mm-hmm. and he legit was good for at least eight more. Yeah, yeah. it he, was like easy. So he he struggled than, slightly on the eighth rep, like he he. But he, by sl- by struggled, I mean he slowed on right. the eighth he rep. He slowed to the point where it looked like he had weight on his back. Yeah, and now this is so. This is less than a year later. We're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, I mean we're later. talking about it was November till today, so it was four mm-hmm. months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever Eddie Hall is doing, it works. Yeah, it's yeah, fucking yeah. working. Keep eating those cheesecakes for dinner, man. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. is absolutely. 
beasting it right now. I mean, yeah. that is one of the most impressive squat like workouts I've seen ever. And then he, and that bar looked like it was about to give out. Yeah, the bar the looked bar like it was going to break before he would. Wickety, 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 the whole time, it's just great. It was also like that shaky thing that we mentioned before. Right. Picture that. The, this bar was very similar, similar to that Similar to thing. that thing that also shakes. It's a good example because it's visual. You can picture right. how shaky it is when I reference that shaky thing. That I referenced previously. <laughs> that I referenced previously. Uh, yes, and also along as like a bonus that, did you see his axle press? No. Holy fuck, dude. Yeah. All right. So at uh, Europe's Strongest Man, mm -hmm. which is in April, it's in a month or so, uh, we are going to see them test... A, the way that they tested the deadlift last year was like the one like mm -hmm. they're going for a world record deadlift. This yeah. year they're doing the axle press, hmm. and uh, Eddie Hall pressed in training a hundred and ninety kilo axle, four hundred eighteen pounds, mm. and it looked like an empty bar. <laughs> like I cannot describe to you how easy <laughs> it looked because it, anything I say sounds hyper, hyper, hyperbolic. No, yes. the, the axle press there, was he using a whole lot of leg or no leg? Or Zero what? leg. Zero leg. He <laughs> literally... <laughs> Strict he, press 400 he, pounds. He, there's, a, there's an axle. It has like the giant wheels on it. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he pulls it up to his belly, pops it up to oh, his I upper belly. Oh, I did see belly, that video. Oh, yeah. Switches yeah. grip, leans back, rolls it up to his chest. I didn't realize that much. Wow. Jesus. That's as, that's how much drama there was in his 418-pound press. It looked like yeah. this. God. There was no legs. There was no waiting. There was nothing. It was. It's one of the craziest <laughs> fucking things I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh. It makes no sense. And then he drops it, and he does, like, the, like the neck side-to-side -side move. Like, <laughs> all right, what's next? Uh -huh. I can actually somewhat relate to that now or at least no not not relate to that because I, mean, I also like cheese because exactly, you exactly. can also <laughs> press 190 well, no, pounds well, no, yeah, I, 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 I can show show how badass Eddie is because I pride myself on having a really good overhead press mm -hmm. my overhead strength is my only strength really at this point because mm -hmm. my back is somewhat jacked up mm -hmm. you know my all time one rep max record is uh, 235 mm -hmm. and I probably can do a little bit less than that now but still I take that as a point of pride I can, I can hold that over most people mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, to do, I can probably, so yeah, realistically, I can probably do about 218 right now. So this 418 <laughs> is 200 more pounds than that, you see. So that, so in that way, <laughs> so you, you guys are it. pretty similar yeah, that yeah. your struggle max right well, now it's, it's, is 218. Well, it's, and his I, I'm, I'm only, like, like I'm, heavy only, single. I'm, only, I'm only two units down from that because it's the 100 and then the 200. You add to that. It's one and then two. <laughs> what are you fucking I just, talking about? I, just, I, thought, I, did, I, I thought you were going somewhere with that. You were just like, <laughs> well, I can, I can also relate to that because of nothing. Thing. <laughs> because of no fuck? reasons. <laughs> what is this? Two units what is a hundred pounds two, two, now. Two, two units unit? more. Exactly. That's just <laughs> that's just the agreed upon. Here's a unit. Mm -hmm. uh, one strong more. Well, one, one strong, strong and then two strong. He's, he's two strongs more. <laughs> <laughs> that's my friend. My friend and I. Uh, we used to. We used to use. Very, like uh, percentages of Klokov to uh -huh. rate, oh, to rate mm -hmm. strength. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we'd be like, oh man, you're approaching 0.9 Klokovs there. there and we'd go. have like KKV as our as like a, <laughs> a little shorthand for it. It was uh -huh. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was an inside joke that I explained, <laughs> which, which makes it <laughs> extra really fun for everyone. Extra else. fun for everybody. You see anything else cool at the Arnold while you were there? Um, you know, actually, we did we did have some pretty cool stuff. I don't know if it. Uh, I saw you failing to get your this. dog dog food, dude. <laughs> you failing like a bitch <laughs> to be able to do <laughs> those push ups. Uh, yeah. So so we ended up walking around, and Nulo had a, had a thing there. So we went to Nulo, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, at the Nulo uh, booth, they had this max push ups in two mm -hmm. minutes with a bag on your back, and I gave it a shot. And like the number one guy was like a hundred and something push ups. I got, I think I barely, I didn't even get max 50. push ups in two minutes with dog food on your with back. dog food on your back, like yeah. a bag, like a forty pound bag of dog food. On yeah, your back. and uh, I got only you know like <laughs> I don't know forty five or yeah, forty six yeah. push ups. Um, but because you don't love Loki enough, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently I don't love my dogs enough. But mm -hmm. what we did see was, uh, let's see here. 
I don't know if you guys saw. I won't play the video because it's kind of long, but we'll play this instead. Mm-hmm. The uh, Colin Burns went 170, 190 at mm. at the Arnold, mm. and then he followed it up with. Uh, he follow. I hope the audio doesn't play. Oh, oh thank yeah. God. Okay, he followed it up. <laughs> so he goes 170, 190. He missed 207, 207 mm-hmm. kilo clean and jerk. He made the clean easy. The jerk, his legs weren't there. But after the event was over, I was like, you know what? I should go find. Colin, like I should go ask him about this this work, and I'm like looking around. I don't see him. Mm-hmm. I don't see him anywhere. It was easy for me to find Yadier. Yadier had finished. He was hanging out with his coach. Mm-hmm. I go and look for Colin. I can't find him. So I was like, you know what? I'll check to see. Maybe he's in the training hall. He went to go see mm-hmm. one of the doctors. Mm-hmm. I go into the training hall, and Colin Burns is fucking squatting, <laughs> like just for the heck of it, just to finish his workout that just day? to finish the workout that day. And I asked him. I was mm-hmm. like, what? Uh, like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'm training through. So here's his here's his 170 that he makes. Nice. He has a very upright catch. Yeah, yeah. it's very impressive to see, and uh, he's definitely a snatch specialist. But so here's the his clean jerk that he made this 190 that's coming up here looked solid. It was it was definitely there. Um, mm-hmm. But you know before this Yadier Nunez who weighs uh, Yadier Casada Yadier Nunez Casada who weighs maybe I don't know 15 kilos less than him. Um, wow. Yo, he hit 190 as well. Yeah. To put that in perspective. Okay, like, so say that one more time. Sorry, Yadier, so. Yadier Casada, mm-hmm. who weighed who weighs like 15 or 16 kilos less than than Colin Burns, oh. also hit 190, and he ended up cleaning, clean and jerking 193. Hmm. Um. So yeah. So I was talking to Colin afterwards, and he was saying he was training through hmm. the the Arnold. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, that's what a normal Saturday workout is. Right. <laughs> so, so heavy snatch, heavy clean and jerk, yeah, heavy squat. Check out his 207 clean. Oh. Easy. Nice. And the jerk, the jerk just wasn't there. It's was like he couldn't quite get underneath it. But uh, he ended up squatting 225 kilos for five. Mm. That's just about 500 pounds. Jesus. Yeah. It's uh, so very, what you're saying is he's a strong man. Yeah, slightly strong he's guy. He's a strong man. Slightly and he also guy. likes artisanal coffee preparations. He does like artisanal <laughs> coffee oh. preparations. He's a very huge coffee snob. As we learned from that video that Rogue made about him. He uses a siphon filter to make his coffee. Yes, it looks like black magic to me. Alchemy. Have you ever have you ever had siphon no, filter coffee? No. no. I so I, I there's a used to be uh, when I was in LA in Santa Monica, there's this place called Funnel Mill, which makes every cup of coffee one at a time and it's yeah. all siphon filter and siphon filter is this really weird style of making coffee where you basically have he uses like a little candle like a votive but yeah. you know, they would use bunsen burners mm-hmm. you have like a, a vial mm-hmm. and you fill it with water and then you have uh what basically looks like a wine like a really small wine glass like mm-hmm. it's kind of like this uh this like wine glass but the stem is hollow mm-hmm. And then the, there's a filter in there. There's coffee grounds mm-hmm. above the filter. And then the filter is connected to a coil mm-hmm. that goes down the hollow stem. With mm-hmm. me so far? Yep. You fill the vial. I stopped paying attention a while ago. <laughs> you fill the vial with water. You put And you put the uh, the stem inside the vial. Mm-hmm. And then you put it over a flame. And mm-hmm. the water boils. It goes up the coil. Mm-hmm. Fills the fills mm-hmm. the, the little like wine glass top or whatever mm-hmm. with the coffee grounds in it. Yeah, and yeah. then as it cools down, you take the fire away and it, it uh, filters back through the filter, oh. comes back down into the vial and it's your cup of coffee. So it's an elaborate way to get the water from there to there. Yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> it's just a way of getting the water from like the boiling water up the thing and then back Why? down <laughs> with coffee. Why? So apparently it's like you can you it lets you control the temperature a lot better okay. and it also it, you know it makes a really good cup of coffee yeah, yeah. for sure. Can you taste the difference, Armin? Uh, I would say from like a Keurig to a siphon filter, yeah, yeah. I can taste the the difference. I don't know. We got a pretty good Keurig in there. It's much oh. harder to burn a cup of coffee when you're doing a siphon filter than it is to burn a cup of coffee if it's like on a burner all day. Yeah, I mean? there you go. Um, so that that is that is a benefit to it, and it's super fucking hipster. Yes. <laughs> it's like like uh, first of all, the name no siphon not. filter. Yes. It's not hipster. What to have like blown glass that I to to to, uh, to make your coffee in the morning? Not at all. What are you talking about? Yeah, he also has a pet pig. Yes, Colin Burns is just he's a, he's a very interesting man. Yeah, he's very interesting. There's there's no more. I mean, is, has weightlifting become just a hipster pursuit at this point? You know, is it just is it hipster to grow? Because he has a I beard. Th- he I has the pig. It he has sort the of is. I think the growth in uh, <coughs> growth in cross uh, growth in weightlifting mm. in the U.S. is certainly due to the 
growth in CrossFit. Mm-hmm. I don't know where Colin got onto weightlifting, but certainly uh, most of the CrossFitters are hipsters yeah. slash mm-hmm. yuppies. So Colin is is pretty old for a weightlifter. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. he started weightlifting when he was like twenty five. Yeah. I want to say, and he's thirty three now. He was in judo, apparently. He was in judo. Yes, that's mm-hmm. true. I did not know that, and I imagine he must have been a really fucking dangerous judo player. Yeah. I would can not want to be thrown getting, by yeah, him. <laughs> can you imagine getting tossed by a guy who can fucking squat six hundred eighty pounds? I know. I mean, he, I don't think he can squat 680 pounds, but, you know, he squats a He's lot. He's getting there. He squats over we'll 600. Yep. So, mm-hmm. anyway, uh, yeah, the Arnold was, was pretty crazy. It was very fucking cold. Yeah. Uh, it was in the mid-20s. Did you see Arnold? I, no. No. No, I did not. Not this year. Not, not this year. year. On Friday, he actually went to the weightlifting meet, but I wasn't there on Friday. I was up there with, with the pan chicks on Friday. Cool. Um, but, yeah, it was it was a cool it was a cool event. I mean, there's always so much going on. Um, you know, we... I got a chance to kind of hang out with uh, uh, this this bodybuilder guy Jesse Huerta, who mm. was with Harbinger. We like walked around the venue a little bit. It was his first time at the Arnold, so he'd really never experienced anything like that. And we saw a bunch of like nerd uh, Star Wars lightsaber fencing people putting on a show. And why did you not do you not know that's a thing? No. What? Okay, so so the Arnold Sport Festival uh-huh. has like a million different sports <coughs> going on all the time. They have sports like. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> that was weird timing. He has it both like leaning away, sneezing. It's like I knew, I knew you were about to say something boring, so I wanted to lean away and not pay attention unless you rattle on for a while. I'm listening, Armin. So, Go ahead. So they, one of the things that they uh, have a competition of is fencing. Mm. And one of the things the fencing people do in order to kind of get a lot of attention in, to their sport is they have like Star Wars cosplay oh. and then they like fence and do elaborate do fencing play, things with yeah, right yeah. as as Star Wars characters but gotcha. not just like not like oh here's a person dressed as Vader here's a person dressed as Luke mm-hmm. it's not like oh here's here's what is known as canonically people who use lightsabers mm-hmm. they'll have like a, a unicorn rainbow colored Boba Fett with a lightsaber trident <laughs> going up against like Chewbacca with a double bladed lightsaber. You know, fencing cool. as a sport grew out of trial by combat in the Middle Ages, <laughs> where <laughs> men with broadswords and no armor usually <laughs> would fight each other, chopping off limbs to settle disputes in court, the winner being innocent in the eyes of God. If you could transport uh, <laughs> from back in that era to this modern venue to see the fencing that is going on. With Star Wars. I think they'd be pretty impressed with, with Rainbow Unicorn Boba Fett with a lightsaber trident. They would immediately, their biggest reaction would be, you mean you guys have no syphilis? <laughs> 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 this place looks great, yeah. Give me that rainbow suit. My genitals are on fire right now. <laughs> I'll wear a pink unicorn suit all day. Yeah. I think so I'm talking pre-syphilis days. That's mainly yeah. black plague. It's true. My genitals are on fire right now. <laughs> um, yes. Not on fire, but, ha- with, but booba- swollen. with boobos. With boobos. Boobos. Mm-hmm. Yes. All over the genitals. I don't them. even... I don't... I don't even know. Boobo is the mechanical owl from Clash of the Titans. That's what we're talking about. What is Clash of the Titans? What? <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, uh, that was funny for a second. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see the fake Star Wars trailer? That yeah. Go- how go- on earth, as an intelligent man, did you fall for that? Uh, here's how I fell for it. I fell for it because I wanted to believe <laughs> so fucking. But bad. it was like no, it was like video game y- like shots yeah. and like and really like bad CGI. and like shitty and yeah and and like like shitty like fan films being cut into it with like some chick who isn't Ray with like a thing on her face and shots from the original movie. Yeah, I, I did I did uh the first thing that gave that gave me kind of like a pause was mm-hmm. the fact that the it looked like parts of it were cut from video games mm-hmm. and that other parts of it were cut from like episodes one, two and three. Yeah. And then the other thing that gave me pause was the audio. A lot of it was was like none of it was new. It was mm-hmm. all things that were from other movies. And I was like, this is a really interesting take on a trailer. <laughs> very, very aggressive of them to kind of change it up. So <laughs> it's like, but wait my, a second. My, I, I was cued in when I was when it was obviously fake from the second one because it was just shots from the original from Force Awakens. But I time. wanted to believe. I know. I started. Your I got greed s- made you blind, Armin. <laughs> I got so excited. I got so excited, I started uh. shaking. Like <laughs> that's how pumped oh, I was man. about the possibility. So of a you were as excited and filled with confirmation bias about Star Wars trailers as I am about alcohol. That's how there that you works. Go. 
Mm -hmm. To bring it all the way back around. All the way back around. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I wonder, it's like when people put together those trailers and I see them, I, I, mean, I keep thinking like, what's the point? You know, what's the point? How, who would, how do these get shared? Who would share them? <laughs> and then that was answered for me. Yep. It was answered. But I even would. normal people can be duped. Right. You know, even so. people who should be much, much, mm -hmm. much smarter than that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that happened. Uh, but I, I mean, I haven't seen Logan yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it I heard either. it was really Neither good. I. Oh. Yeah. Mm. I, I did text you guys to see if you guys wanted to see it, and both of you guys <laughs> gave me the double All right, words. in fairness, as sick as I am right now, I was a lot sicker that day. Cliff has no excuse. Cliff, had, he was just being well, a Well, Kyle, Kyle proposed. He sent a text uh, the day before. Like, that hey, was you when I was feeling Logan? better. For I know, like, you're feeling better, but you sent a text, hey, do you want to see Logan tomorrow afternoon? And I texted back, now. Nah. Yeah. So maybe next week. <laughs> maybe next week. I sure. did see John Wick 2. How was it? I haven't um, seen it yet. It is... Thoroughly okay, and uh, this is someone who loved John Wick one. It um, it continues the story of John Wick, and it certainly has a gr far greater quantity of action. But the action is just not as transcendently well executed as it was in uh, the first John Wick film. In the first John Wick film, there was some new cool idea in the action choreography every um, every few minutes. You would see something. You would shoot someone through a wall. Or <clears throat> you would see some cool um, shootout or stunt or he'd grab, so he would do something interesting or cool that would make you go wow and applaud every few seconds. Uh, and that was what made it so cool. It was so inventive. And there's a lot more in this film. There's a lot more punching and shooting, but those moments aren't there. It's just like it feels like a lot of what we saw in the first film repeated and more of it. Interesting. Yeah. A lot more ela – well, here, here's what I attribute the lack <coughs> of interesting action to is what defined the original John Wick's action is very simple camera and lighting setups where the camera was nice and pulled back and you saw some interesting, highly realistic, playing by the rules choreography playing out there uh, in real time in a nice wide shot. There wasn't nearly as much of that in John Wick 2. There was a lot – a lot fancier camera movement, a lot fancier lighting setups, much more elaborate approach cinematically to all of the action scenes, which probably was allowed for with the greater budget and which might have been a necessity of a limited production in the first John Wick to have everything so simple. The result is not so many memorable moments. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Is it it doesn't go quite as far as like Jason Bourne esque shaky cam fights, does no, it? No, not not at all. Not at okay. all. And 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 you know, it and it's it's fun and it's definitely worth seeing, but I I went in ready to be wowed by action moments and I knew that I was like there's a very elaborate opening um action sequence that involves a lot of fighting and cars. And there was maybe one moment that was supposed to be kind of a wow, cool, interesting action idea that went on one moment, and even that felt like kind of a swing and a miss. And so when this whole elaborate action sequence had concluded at the beginning, and I was left feeling that I had seen a quantity of action, but there, wasn't, there was no one moment in the whole thing that caused the audience to suddenly start applauding or go yeah. wow or gasp. I knew that we were not in for. I was worried we were not in for the same experience as, as the first film, and that turned out to be correct. Interesting. Um, we also saw Get Out as well. How was that? Very good. Nice and perfect. Yes. That's one of those nice, perfect movies. Yes. Is yeah. it? Does it Very still good. have 100 percent of Ron Tomatoes? <coughs> no, Armand White gave it a negative review. So um, <laughs> it. Uh, <laughs> I like that one of the actors. Did he actually? Yeah. No, okay. Did. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, perfect, and one perfect. of the actors actually tweeted out, "Armand White is a bitch." <laughs> after uh, <laughs> after the. Uh, after that thing, um, but no, it's really it's really good. I I don't want to say too much because, you know, there are things that you don't exactly want to spoil about the film. But it's just a very, it is a um, it's it in is, a shared universe. It's a shared universe film with M Night Shyamalan's The Village. No, it is it is <laughs> it's a shared universe with um, with uh, with girls. It's just the same character, um, same character that Allison Williams plays in both. And Lena Dunham shows up. Um, <laughs> I just stepped as, on my cord. As Kyle has lost his mic, I'll continue talking about it, but uh, this is Jordan Peele's feature film debut, and I assume he directed yeah. some of the episodes of the highly cinematic Key and Peele show. He did not. He did not? No. He directed none this of the is episodes his, of This that. is his debut show, his debut directing effort. Directing anything? Uh, no, he the guy who directed every one of the episodes of Key and Peele is the guy who directed Keanu. 
Uh, I knew that that guy directed a bunch of Key and Peele. The I answer is no to the, your question. This is the first I'm thing. I'm skeptical. I will look into it. Then you it. can look into I it. I will look into I it. I just listened to him talk about it at length on a podcast. Well, fuck you, asshole. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> but uh, Jordan Peele. Sucks to be wrong, <laughs> huh? <laughs> this, this being his first movie. <laughs> this being his Not first movie. Not just his movie. first movie. His first, first anything. His first any directorial. Hmm. Now I'm thinking maybe he didn't do it on his own. Maybe he had that guy over his shoulder, like ghost directing the whole thing, and just Jordan Peele got uh, credit for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. saying that because he's black. That's <laughs> fucked up. <Cliff. laughs> Seriously, mm-hmm. the entire movie is about that. Yeah, Dude, I don't know. I don't really know. I don't yeah, know but anyway, what's so. night? With <laughs> Get Out is a good movie. It is. Um. It is. It is very good. But it is the screenplay is uh, fantastic because it is a cool. Uh, kind of schlocky horror movie that works on that level but is perfectly thematically integrated so it, it at no point does it have to pull back and the it, it doesn't approach theme in the kind of very clunky George Romero way where there's like heavy symbols and things that are thrown at like no it's the just fact fu- that they're trapped in a mall <coughs> exactly or like a symbol <coughs> consumerism being turning us know. into zombies blah 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 yeah, yeah it's like nothing nothing like that it just functions perfectly as a film but in doing so because of the setup because of the concept like within the conceit itself is all of the meaning. So it never has to stop and narrate its meaning to you. It never pulls, it, there's not some twist at the end that, you know, it's like that allows you in on, that like lets you know, like, oh, this is the abstraction we were hinting at the whole time. It's just a perfectly, it's just a perfectly written um, horror movie that is like perfectly thematically integrated. That being said, and I think that the film is so good and it's, um, <coughs> excuse me. So good in how it's written that some people are not. I, I think that it's not perfect because, and this is the main thing I noticed of, about it, is that it feels like it was directed by someone who had never directed anything before. Mm. Just in the sense that he does not, he the, the line of subtlety and good taste he's able to ride in the screenplay, he is not able to ride in the, um, in the actual uh, execution of the film. So a lot of it is... Sometimes just very pedestrian in how it's executed, but more than that, he sometimes pushes things. He puts way too much English on the ball with lots of scares that in, that should be scary. There's moments that could be scary and creepy, but instead just become silly and stuff. So it's like something will pop up in the background and be stung with a music cue and the performance will be over the top at the same time and it's just like and certain of the performances feel uneven the main actor who's really good he was in black mirror is just directed into being so to playing everything so small and so subtle that um that it it almost it almost doesn't it only almost wondering if it's an element that's supposed to be a textual element of the movie like he like even big scares or moments or reactions are played so small that it's like they don't register with the audience because they don't seem to be registering with your protagonist so again it feels unevenly directed mm-hmm. but the script is very mature and re- and really 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 good so wow yeah that's that's fascinating. I haven't seen, I haven't seen it. I should probably watch it. Yep. Except Katie doesn't do scary movies. So <laughs> that's honestly part of the thing. You know, with it being is it not that scary overall? Kind of. It's it, it's very interesting. It's very suspenseful, but not that scary. Yeah, it's as much a awkward comedy of manners as it is a horror. Movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a good. That's actually a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep that in mind. Um. So I tell her it's by the funny Key and Peel guys. I mean, she knows. Okay. She knows. And she yeah. also realizes that she also understands that it's not a comedy. Yeah. So. Well, it kind well, of is a comedy in yeah. places. Well, that's the thing. And that's where it gets weird is I feel. And just to get to touch on the thing I just did, but with a little bit. I'll just give an example. So, like, there's one moment where, like, a door flies open. And, you know, there's supposed to be, like, one of the creepy servants is, like, when the door momentarily gets bumped open, you see the creepy servant is, like, staring back ominously at our protagonist through the door. And. The the problem is that's a good that's a good beat and it's a good beat that could be executed quite subtly. Unfortunately, the beat is executed such that the the person standing at the other door is looking like over their eyes and has a menacing grin on their face and it's stung with a sound effect and so it elicited laughter from the audience <laughs> when it was I think intended to be a creepy Interesting. beat. Now, but here's the thing is that 
it actually it was executed, and this is where I think some it was executed in exactly the way that such a beat would have been executed in on comedy. Key and Peel. Right. If if they were doing a parody of a horror movie, and the door bumped open, and the the, the servant, the maid, were staring ominously through with a with a scary grin on her face, it would effectively parody that beat in a horror film and elicit a laugh. And that is exactly what it did. But it did it in a film that was asking you to take that moment seriously. And that's what I mean in that he's a very very mature writer. He's brilliant as a writer and can ride this line um, of good taste and subtlety. So he'll introduce something scary, but then he'll pull back and he'll like deflate that so you can ride this line. Um, and, and But it's like again and again and again, it's kind of, kind of keeps whiffing some of the beats in his own movie just because he doesn't know like, oh no, if you push it that far, it's not going to make it extra scary. It's going to make it silly. And that's what a lot of it felt like. Um, but that being said, not to detract from the film overall because the, the script is so strong and it's executed so well in every other aspect that it's really, really good. Did you guys see the Oscars? I did. Did we talk yeah. about that? No, we haven't no, talked about that yet. No. Actually, yeah. Did Did you see the whole? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, the whole Moonlight. I'm, the whole I'm moonlight. glad. I'm glad I didn't turn off the TV <laughs> yes. before the Moonlight reveal came. Because I, I left. Was, I was, oh, left? really? I was at. I was what? at a. I was, so I was at a. Uh, I was at a uh, watching party. Whatever. We uh-huh. just like ordered a bunch of people a pizza. At a party. <laughs> you just, just booked it <laughs> as soon as the thing they were was like. Announced? They were like, no. They're like, we're yeah. gonna we're gonna do after the commercial break is best picture, and I was like. Fuck it, whatever. Like I'll get, I'll get a New York Times <laughs> like you know notification when it comes up. Like this has been going on for too long. So we got in our car, drove home, and then we make it home, and uh, just in time for La La Land to be announced. Uh-huh. Katie is like, okay, I'm gonna go. Like I, you know, I'm gonna start brush brushing my teeth, whatever. And uh-huh. she's like, she goes to the bathroom, and like I'm watching it, just like half paying attention. And then suddenly all that shit goes down. And I was yeah, like, yeah. pause. I need to wait for Katie to come back uh-huh. so we can watch it. It was fucking crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. That yeah. was insane. Uh, it's yeah. like that's that thing that people have talked about for years. Like, what if somebody read the wrong name? What would happen? We got to see that happen. Yeah, for the big one at the for end. For the big one yeah, at the for end. The, yeah, the most not, important not, not one. Not for any of the others. Not for sound mixing. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh, what I what I also think about that I like about this is it finally makes the Oscars exciting again, and the ratings will go up a lot next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. why? Because no. the Oscars were borderline. I don't give a shit. I haven't yeah. seen most of these movies. It's not that exciting. Yeah. yeah, you know. And but now, ooh, how will they screw up next time? <laughs> Was Moonlight any good? I, I haven't seen, seen it yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> which is which has almost become the joke about Moonlight. Right. It's like I've I've heard amazing things. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Um, but uh, I saw Get Out instead, so that counts. That's, yeah, that's fair. It counts for what, Clinton? Counts. For <laughs> I'll let you fill that in. No, 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 I want, I want you. Yeah. <laughs> what I will say though is that I almost did the exact same thing you were because it was just it ran long this year. And I don't have TV, so we're kind of watching it in, like, a common room at my uh, girlfriend's apartment complex. And so we were just kind of sitting in this weird room. We were out of – we didn't really have snacks. And so, like, 45 minutes before the Oscars was over, I was like, I'm ready to get up and leave. So, like, as soon as they announced La La Land, I stood up out of the couch and I said, all right, let's head back to your apartment. And uh, and then she was just like, hold on, I want to see them talk. And I was like, I sat back down, and I'm glad that I did because, uh, holy shit – Mm-hmm. Uh, it made it, it was the most entertaining it thing. It was fantastic. That it was the best part of the entire happened. night. Yeah. Like, but, this is not a joke. And then, like, holding up the envelope. It was perfect. You know who I feel sorry for in all this? Warren Beatty. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. as soon as it happened, I'm like, Warren Beatty is old and dumb. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then, as it turns out, he had the wrong envelope and just did, like, was holding an envelope that said Best Actress Emma Stone. But the funniest part, though, was that um, the funniest part was how, like, Emma Stone in this, they had this little like in the like press conference thing afterwards. You know, she did all of her diplomatic stuff. Where she's like, "I'm just so happy that Moonlight won." Yeah, like she like kind of reeling from realizing, you know, and she did all that. But then I don't know if she weirdly thought somehow, like, because it like because they got up and said, "No, it was the best act." They had the best actress nomination. I don't know if she weirdly thought that people thought that somehow the blame was on her because the best yeah, yeah. I have no idea what was going through her head because then she launches into this weird thing where she's like um and I don't know what they were talking about because I have the best a- I had my the best actress envelope in my hand the whole time and like gets kind of pissy about it oh, and like I'm just maybe like she like snuck it in or, yeah, something. or something I have no idea and she's like I have it in my hand the whole time I was like Emma, no one, no one was accusing you of like sabotaging in, in the Oscars. Her, in, in her defense, she was pretty sauced at that point. She, this is probably true. That's true. That's true. The best, yeah. the Make best her lisp more than usual. That's right. The yeah. best thing that came out of that entire uh, debacle was 
the did you see the picture of Ryan Gosling laughing? On stage after he found out, like before no, they, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. There's like the, he like he basically does like a double take, like turns, like, <laughs> <laughs> like I can't wait for this shit to hit the fan. Oh man, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. and th- talk about by the way the worst position for um, the worst position for the filmmakers of La La Land to be in because they're already in a position where there's all these ridiculous think pieces being written that essentially say like if La La Land wins, it's Proof that you know Hollywood is racist, <laughs> which is an absurd position to take. Um, you know, it's fine. Or like La La Land is a bullshit movie that's being overlauded because it's just Hollywood stroking itself off. Blah 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 blah. All this stuff. So for Moonlight to win would be very celebrated. But if Moonlight had been uh, the had, name had been in, had been read, they would get to in you know all the attention would be on Moonlight, and they would get to enjoy that from the anonymity of their seats. Right. Instead, they get dragged onto stage so that they're all standing there in front of millions of people. The second guy was already giving his speech. The though. second guy was already giving his speech when they announced, "Oh, it wasn't you, you white movie, you Hollywood movie. It's the black movie that deserved it." Now let's you see what fuckers. <laughs> and now it's exactly. And now we're all looking at what expressions are on your fucking faces, and it's like, and it, and what was crazy is just like seeing like Damien Chazelle like shrinking in the background. I saw a video like people made a lot of beams out of that. But what was I? I, I, I like I like people were saying the La La Land producer. He was so honest and courageous. He grabbed the envelope and he held it up and he said, "Moonlight won. What a great dude!" And it's like he is covering. There's no way. There's no way other than doing that to not to yeah. like as soon as he realized what was going on, that's a shitty position like, to be in. Does that make him a great dude or just a person? Yes, or just <laughs> a fucking person. You know, he he played it just fine there. He played it in the best possible way. <coughs> he kind of started off it sounded like he was doing it as a joke. He was like, Not that it really matters because we didn't win. Moonlight yeah. won and like yeah. seemed like he was about to walk away yeah, and yeah. then grab the envelope. He's like, No envelope. fucking seriously, guys. Yeah. He like yanks it out of Warren Beatty's old hands <laughs> and Warren Beatty's like, No, this isn't my fault. You guys, <laughs> that was the weirdest moment though. Was <laughs> while Moonlight's Warren like Bay. making their way to the stage, Warren. like Moore and Beatty just finds the microphone. I would love to have been the director uh, in the booth, like, oh my god, Warren Beatty has the mic. <laughs> How did Warren Beatty get the microphone? And then he's like, well, guys, let me explain to you what happened. And like in the back, like, no, Warren Beatty, what are you gonna say? And he's like, I had the wrong envelope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, so that was the Ar- the Arnold. That was the yeah. Oscars. <laughs> it's like Warren Beatty gets the mic. Now everyone, calm down and let these black fellas get on the stage. <laughs> no Warren Beatty, <laughs> kill his mic. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, he's like, I'm just so happy for the cut, and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> my cuts out. My cuts out. <laughs> Uh, oh, all right, so let's let's instead of being played out, the orchestra director jumps up on stage and <laughs> just, him just with punches him in the head, just yeah. stabs him through the face <laughs> with a baton. There, yep. <laughs> that, that probably made it all the way over here, but that's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You you coughed your like your your throat aids all over this. That's right. Earlier, so threads. Um, your threads. So let's let's go ahead and close out the show with our new reviews. We have plenty oh, of shit. new reviews. Reviews! That's right. Uh, so, from Most Elite Intermediateness, love yes. it, five stars. Awesome blend. Uh, they've misspelled a lot of stuff in here, but I'm going <laughs> to read it normally. Mm-hmm. Awesome blend of not taking ourselves too seriously while trying to maintain an active, healthy lifestyle. Look forward to this podcast the most out of all the ones I listen to. The combo of the three guys is excellent. Love the oh. videos of Armin Fights a Bear But Not Really and the first two episodes of the open experience were great. Keep up the great work. Nice. Thank you very much for your review, although I would say that we don't take ourselves seriously at all. In fact, are just mocking and self-deprecating the whole time. There and you go. Are we trying to live a healthy lifestyle? Not really. I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, half I think of he's giving us too is. much credit. Yeah. Too much credit on there. Uh, let's I, see. Uh, Miko's Closet Gym. Review. New and updated. Five stars. <laughs> I remember you, Miko's Closet Gym. Completely changing my review. I love this podcast. So fun <laughs> and stupid. Enjoyable the whole time. Look forward to it more than any others that come out each week. But dear Lord, y'all cynical move out movies. Gonna stop listening <laughs> if you review Logan poorly. Ah. <laughs> Lucky for you, we haven't seen Logan yet, but we will make a we'll make a team trip next week once go. Kyle is feeling better mm. and Cliff isn't a dick. I'm I, into I, it. I guess, sure. Oh, the Logan hasn't even risen to the level of respect to give it a bad review, so that's where it is right now. There you go. Fair mm-hmm. enough, fair enough. Uh let's see. Uh from only chick listening. 
Uh, hey, hey, a lady. Great Hello, show. Hello, lady. Great show for the husky and skinny fat CrossFitter. Five stars. <laughs> Great show for those I who have accepted. I aspire to be skinny fat. Yeah. yeah. Great show for those who have accepted they will never be professional exercisers. That being said, here's what I want. Number one, review the Oreo flavors so I don't have to find out the new strawberry Oreo tastes like a gorilla ate strawberry chapstick and shat onto a cracker. <laughs> mm. That's not a bad idea. I had, <laughs> the, uh, I had, I had the birthday cake Oreos. We had the birthday lately. cake Oreos when we watched the fight the other night. You can smell the sprinkles. They really do taste like birthday cake. Wow. Mm-hmm. They're pretty good. Are they better than normal Oreos, though? No. Nothing is. Yeah. Those are America's favorite cookie for a reason. You're going to want to eat the flavored Oreos as little treats, but regular Oreos, they're the kind of Oreos you can just eat 100 of in a row. Good point. Yeah. Good point. Uh, Let's see. Number two. You know the people you unfollow on Facebook and IG because they think they're up to some elite crossfitting but actually are mediocre and post every detail of their day? Pick one of those people and do a play-by-play of their posts every week. I want to have some <laughs> color commentary on their cryo sessions, bulletproof coffee, new natural grips, and PRs. We should do that. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Just someone to bully continuously who we don't know. Those people fucking exist. And, I mean, if yeah. Daniel was doing the Open, we probably could have made it on Daniel, but he's not, so we can't. That's but, true. Uh, yes, to, to put that in perspective, by the way, I can think of a handful of athletes <laughs> who spend the entire year, like, hashtag elite athleting themselves uh-huh. on Instagram who could not finish the first workout in the <laughs> Open. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, that makes, I believe that makes me a very elite athlete, hashtag very elite athlete. Yes, yes, very yes, important. yes. And then finally, number three from Only Chick Listening, Cliff sounds like Bill Nye. Keep that up, Cliff. <laughs> Really? Oh, okay. I thought it sounded like Lauren Michaels. Isn't that what we agreed on? Um, Either way. Either as way, long as she's not good. calling you Chris. So mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. That's good. You got, <laughs> she got your name right. That's you what sound really like matters. Beekman from Beekman's World. I don't even remember what that sounds like. <laughs> I don't remember either. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Another five-star review. Great podcast by Dave Castro Sucks. <laughs> Dave says, hilarious podcast. Can't wait to listen to pre-workout roulette. Yeah. But in all honesty, very entertaining podcast that reminds me of my, me and my buddies bullshitting. 10 of 10 would listen again. Nice. Thank you, Dave Castro. Fuck and yeah. we'll touch on the pre-workout workout roulette at the end. But yes. go ahead. Um, Brie810, the official position on scales needed <laughs> is five stars. <laughs> I listen to a handful of podcasts, and this is the only one I never miss. Tune nice. in for entertaining banter on fitness, film, and other random ramblings. Their sarcasm and dry humor are just my style and lead to frequent laugh at loud moments. You won't be disappointed. <laughs> Keep it up, guys. And this review is from Melissa Kendall of Square Cross. Oh, so another the lady. Chick, the another second lady. lady. Mm. Thank you very much, Thank Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Greatly appreciate it. And, Absolutely. And uh, let's see. And the final new review is from Win Osk. Great podcast. Five stars. One of the best podcasts around and can best be described as the Seinfeld of podcasts. <laughs> it's a podcast about nothing that makes me laugh every time. That's the go. most accurate one. I, I'm most proud of that review. That's a yeah. great compliment. Yep. Uh-huh. Yes. I'll take that. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. And I'm into it. the uh, the uh, taste testing um that that we were that we mentioned which which review was it looking forward to the uh, oh the the uh, pre workout roulette pre workout roulette yes right. now we decided last time everyone that if you uh, so how many reviews are we at currently? we are currently at fifty two reviews fifty of and which nice. are five we decided star. it was going to be uh, 100, 100, 100 think, reviews yes. so listen guys it's up to you we are going to get three shaker bottles put one two and three scoops of a <laughs> off brand Taiwanese pre workout that likely contains cocaine. Um, we're going to drink them uh, at random, and then we're going to podcast while beta alanine sticks needles in our eyes. Yes. <laughs> so this is going to happen, um, but it's up to you to make it happen. Because if we just do this two or three reviews a week thing, it's going to take forever. It's not going to happen for another year. If we get to 100 reviews, we're at 52 right now. If we get to 100 five-star reviews, we are going to do that on this podcast. And so, we'll film it. Yes, and we're going to film it. And, and if you've never seen someone <laughs> overdose on pre-workout, yes. the moment I get the three scoop shaker, <laughs> you're gonna witness some mad shit. That yes. is that is the most entertaining We're gonna have option there. Yeah. Itchy, itchy faces. So you guys, even half a scoop of pre-workout <laughs> like fucks me up. <laughs> yeah, see, that, 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 that's why I, I really God. I, I know it'll be random and it'll be fine if I get three scoops. Okay, but it's just not gonna be that funny because I It'll normally be as funny have as if it's Armin. Exactly because I normally have two and I don't think three would really be noticeable there. Well, this okay. is why it's roulette. Exactly. Oh, oh yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so again, it's up to you guys, so stop fucking around. I know you've been thinking, hey, I've been, I might want to uh, put a five-star review on iTunes and do it. Do it right now while you're thinking about it, and we will get to that 
pre-workout roulette. Very true. Within the next some amount of weeks. Yes. So says Bill Nye, the science guy. There exactly. you go. Uh, gentlemen, your social medias. I am at Mr. Kyle Bogart on Instagram and Twitter. I am very inactive at HeteroBear on Twitter. <laughs> I might have to I might have to get more active on Instagram. I'm really extremely active on Instagram. I demand that more of you also follow me and like my posts. I demand that you follow yeah. me. I just it's not in my daily rounds to check there. I just need right. to get on that. That's a good that. point. <laughs> and I am at Armin Hoist. Uh, thank you so much folks for listening to this episode. Good luck in 17.3 and we will catch you next week. Later. Boom. Later.